Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to the Omega Files. I'm your host, Dr. Freedom, and tonight I've gotten the opportunity to sit down and talk to an actor. I have to admit, I had a hard time finding anything on. You're just... <laughs> Look on IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> no, even that wasn't a help. Uh, the, the magnificent Tim Trelor. How are you doing, Tim? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, just great here. Um, uh, you've been in so many different roles. I watched your show reel last night. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, I, I popped it up here on the on the computer. And All right. Okay. So you've played cops, you've played priests, you've played like uh, almost like a gangster type of character. Um, yeah, all the nice guys, yeah. <laughs> so what's, so is that the type of character you prefer is like a villain, or would you like to prefer you know, to play a hero? or? Well, I think every, most actors prefer playing villains, I think. Um, they're the more interesting roles. I mean, most actors would say that. Playing the baddie is more fun. Um, you can get to sort of like explore your darker side, you know. So uh, yeah, I'd say that. Rather, I can't see myself being a hero now, not on my age. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, I saw recently you performed in Midsummer Night's Dream in Westrum. Oh uh, yes, yeah. Uh, what's it like performing that in the open air versus you know a theater? Well, I haven't performed before in the open air as a professional. I, I did it as an amateur once, some twenty years ago. Um, it was just great fun. It's you can just let the lid off, you know, and you can just express yourself, and it, it it's it, it takes a lot of voice, and it's very energetic and it's very tiring, but it's such good fun performing open air. Um, you can just show off, to be honest. Okay, now what led you to work for Big Finish? Because you've done a great deal of many roles there. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it was a fortunate um, accident actually. I was at um, a party in a park once, and. Uh, John Dorney, who does a lot of work for, you'll know about, who does a lot of work for Big Finish, he writes and acts for them. He was a couple of years above me in drama school, and he was at this party, and we got chatting, and he said what he was doing and writing for Big Finish. And I, being the sort of desperate actor, as we all are, I said, oh, you got any work, you got any work, you know. And um, he said, well, what radio have you done? And I said, well, actually, I, um, I've done a lot of work for BBC Radio 4, a lot of radio plays, because I, um, when I left Drama School, I'd, I'd won this award that gave a contract for uh, six months at uh, BBC Radio. So I, I had quite a lot of experience, and he thought, oh, well, you'd be perfect for it. So he, he put me up, and I got a job, and then it went from there, really. Um, so it's great, yeah, working for Big Finish is a fantastic experience, I can't tell you. I mean, you probably have all heard about the legendary lunches <laughs> at Big Finish. Um, but it, it's just such a lovely working environment, and um, you know, actors are queuing up to work there. It's uh, it's a really, really nice place to work. Okay, now you have an upcoming box set for the you know, John Pertwee adventures. Uh, those are called uh, oh, heck, I just had it written down here. Havoc of the em Havoc of Empires and Prisoners of the Lake. That's them. Yeah, I just finally okay. found my note sheet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now, how did this come? Now, I know you portrayed the third Doctor, at, you know, in light at the end for that little bit there. Uh, now, how did this come about? Uh, how did you wind up, you know, landing this particular role? Well, what happened? The, f the first ever big finish I did uh, was Destination Nerva um, okay. with John. Uh, sorry, John. Um, Tom Baker, and <clears throat> I was playing a <laughs> sounds odd a zombie uh, British Victorian colonial. I can't even say it, colonial lord. Um, and Tom apparently said to Nick Briggs, who was the producer on it, he said, God, he sounds like John, you know. And I didn't, obviously, I, I didn't hear that. I just was doing a posh voice. And it, it kind of went from there, really. So they approached me about um, trying to do the third doctor. Um, and sort of like, you know, a, a couple of uh, trial and error situations. And um, it ended up with them getting me to do the uh, the third Doctor as a box set. Okay. Well, what's it like, though, stepping into such an iconic character? You know, John Pertwee, you know, very well known and all that. It must yeah. have been felt a little strange, you know, stepping well, in. Yeah, the... absolutely. Yeah, because he's, he's irreplaceable, isn't he? And uh, you can't ever step into his shoes because he's one of a kind and he, he is what he was. And, um, yeah, I, it was, I'm doing, you know, I, I just do my best. I watch all these videos and um, I tried to do a bit more of an impersonation because I don't think you can ever capture uh, an, an individual's voice. I think you just um, 
the best way of doing it, I, I think, is to try and catch their mannerisms and their style and their sort of their tomba and their um, their way of speaking. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, John Perry was an absolute legend, wasn't he? I mean, I remember him more from um, Wurzel Gummidge. I don't know if you get it over in the States. Um, when he played the Scarecrow in the early 80s. No? Oh, yeah, well, I've, heard, I've heard of it, but I, I don't yeah. think it's widespread, yeah. Yeah, but um, sort of, so my um, my way of getting into the character will be one of his lines from Wurzel Gummidge, which was... Uh, Cup of tea and slice of cake, please, Anthony. You know, and then you go, then you go back to the the, the truth of how he spoke. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically a matter of just uh, watching um, him as Doctor Who and trying to trying to co well yeah, copy, I suppose, um, as best as you can. It, it, as I say, it's, it's you can't really impersonate. You could get an impersonator to play John Pertwee, as I'm sure lots of people have, but. Um, I think I think probably you know you you can only go so far if you try and impersonate. You just have to try and catch some of his his idiosyncrasies or his mannerisms, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was it like working working with uh, Richard Franklin and Katie Manning on this project? Oh, amazing! They were so supportive. Um, oh, they they were absolutely brilliant because I went in absolutely scared. Um, obviously, because it, it was a great deal of pressure on the fact, oh my God, you're being the third Doctor. But they were so supportive, and obviously they knew John and they worked with him on the series. And um, but I, I couldn't have asked for um, for more support from them. They were absolutely wonderful to me. Yeah, yeah. Katie's been praising your performance. She said it's incredible from what she's heard. Oh, she's a very nice lady. Yeah. Okay, so. I heard you had they they sent you some of the DVDs of you know Pertwee's adventures. Uh, yeah. uh, what was it like sitting back and watching that? Well, it was it was a bit mad actually because um, when I was uh, a kid, uh, my Doctor Who was Tom Baker uh, from my age group. So uh, John Pertwee would have you know I was only about two or three I think when he was the Doctor. So uh, he wasn't really my Doctor, um, but I knew as I say I knew from Wars of Gamage. Um, and I'd seen a few of the Doctor Who episodes he was in as repeats. But, you know, it, it, as I say, Tom Baker was the Doctor of my time. So it, it was great. But watching it and see, seeing what a masterclass um, he gives in, in performance, I mean, he was truly a really terrific actor. You know, he, he so theatrical. And I suppose that's what you need as a Doctor Who, isn't it? I guess. Okay. Is there anything you can tell us to expect in the upcoming Third Doctor set? You know, no spoilers or anything like that. But no, yeah, I can't tell you. I can't tell you anything. <laughs> oh, okay. The big finish will come and cut my throat if I tell you. <laughs> so uh, no, I can't tell you anything, unfortunately. But uh, they're they're very they're great stories. Justin Richards and Andy Lane have have, have come up with two wonderful uh, stories. Um, yeah, I I, I I I'd love to tell you more. But I, I'd have to come over there and, um, you know, kidnap you. But so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, bet you know, between stage, screen, film, you know, and audio, uh, which medium do you feel is the most challenging out of all those? They're all challenging in their, in their own way. Um, film, because you have to come up with something instantly. Um, Theatre is because you have to re not repeat, but you have to uh, reproduce something day after night after night after night um, radio is very very hard I, I actually funny enough I was just listening to the radio earlier and there was an advert and Tom Baker was the was narrating this advert for I can't remember what it was for and he was talking about radio being the theatre of the mind and I think radio and audio work is particularly hard because you have to try and uh, um, approach it so that the listener can make those pictures in their minds and that that's quite hard and I think radio is actually one of the hardest things to do personally speaking okay um, is there a certain type of project that you'd like to do in the future that's coming up or you know is there anyone that you really really want to get your hands on in, in, in what respect Oh, I mean, like, is there, like, say... Um... I could tell you loads of people I'd love to get my hands on, but oh. I don't think you could broadcast 
and they always short skirts. But I didn't say that. My girlfriend might be listening, so go on. <laughs> okay, are, are there any other upcoming projects you know you'd like to talk about other than the third doctor, you know, third doctor box set that you have on on the boils? I, I, I would. I, 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 I'm I'm sort of in negotiation at the moment for a, a couple of things, which I can't really tell you about, unfortunately. Uh. But um, uh, I'd love to. If you call me in about three days' time, I'm, I might be able to tell you. But um, uh, it's a, a theatre job. Um, but it's just basically an actor's life most of the time I mean 95% of us are out of work at one time so unless you're a name um, you know you're well known then we're all scrabbling around for work to be honest um, you know so uh, it, it's all a matter of you know uh, meeting people doing auditions and, and whatever um, that's the way a <laughs> an actor's life you know Okay, no. a, lot, a lot of drinking and a lot of sort of moaning, really. <laughs> <laughs> now, because there isn't a whole lot out there about your early life, uh, I just wanted to ask the question of, you know, what made you get into acting? You know, what, what finally, you know, you know, got, how did you catch the bug? Well, I was, um, I was a civil servant actually until I was twenty-eight. I used to work at the um, the law courts, um, but I did amateur dramatics from the age of about fourteen. And I remember I was going out with a girl at the time who was a student, and I was about I was in my mid twenties, and she sort of convinced me to chuck it all in, go to drama school. And so uh, the, the theatre company I was working for at the time, um, as an amateur, um, I was getting some very good reviews, and I just thought I'd go for it. And um, I had to sell everything up. Um, I sold my flat, my car, I, I had to raise money, and. Um, I, at 28, I went to um, London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art for three years. And um, it's quite risky, obviously, as you get older, to be able to break in um, to the, the the profession. But um, luckily, it, I've, I've been very lucky. It, it's worked out so far. I mean, there's ups and downs, but um, there is, I suppose, in every uh, profession, isn't there? But, um, yeah, so that's what happened, really. Um, and no one's found me out yet, or probably some have. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's just it's it's you know every job it's a series of jobs. It's not really a career as such in in the normal sense of the word. Um, you know, we work for one firm and you 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 move up. Basically, you're freelance, so you, you take the jobs that you want or the ones that you're offered. You know. Okay, before we came on the air, you mentioned that you'd love to come over to New York. Have you worked in the States before? Or? I, I have, yeah, a few, several times, actually. I've worked in New York um, about three or four times. I was in um, on Broadway with um, Sir Patrick Stewart um, in Macbeth about seven years ago. Um, I was over there last year with King Lear. Uh, King Lear was played by the great Frank Langella. Um, and I, w I did something at the Lincoln Center in New York about, God, that's going back about 14 years ago, um, a Harold Pinter uh, play. But um, it's always a place I love going. I mean, I've visited uh, America uh, several times. I've been to, I've got a friend in San Francisco and in Santa Fe. And yeah, it's, um, I love America. Okay, is it just the vibe of the city or is it you know, the work there? Or? Oh, it's the vibe of the city more than anything. New York is just on its own. I mean, London's great, but New York is my favorite city, <laughs> without a doubt. I hope no one gets offended by that. Oh, that's okay. Like I said, I, I've got a lot of people I know who are from New York and also, you know, listeners who are from New York, so. Yeah. Okay, well, that's about the run of questions I had to ask. Uh, is there anything, you know, any organization you represent you want to talk about, or? Um, I can't think of anything, really. Um... <laughs> I'd say uh, our government are trying to amend the Fox Hunting Act of 2004, which I'm very vehemently against, and I imagine most of your listeners would be. Um, I don't even need to explain why, but uh, there we are. Okay, yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I really don't see, you know, harming animals as a sport, you know, for... No, it's barbaric, and yeah. in the name, you know, it's not a sport, is it, because... You know, if foxes had guns, then fair play. But, you know, they don't. So, um, anyway, that's a bit of a sour note, isn't it, to end on? <laughs> I know, it is in a way, but it's a powerful message, you know, that... You know. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I just want to thank you, Tim. I'm really looking forward to listening to the third Doctor box set. Uh, it, I've thank listened. You. I've listened to the clips from it. It's. It sounds like you're going to be doing amazing work in that. So I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I hope so. I hope you enjoy it. I mean, it's all trial and error, I suppose. You know, it, you know, the the more you do something, the more you get better at it. It's, it's, it as in everything, I suppose. Um, so I've given it a good shot. So I just hope people like it. Um, you know, that's all I can. I can do really. I can just do my best. You know. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to hearing your name a little bit more in the future. Uh, I'd love to even have you back on maybe a little bit later on. You'll talk about the third Doctor Adventures when it does come out. Sure, uh, I'd love to. Okay, well, th oh, thanks again for giving me some of your time. Um, everybody, thanks so much, Brian. No, it was no problem. It was my pleasure. I just want to th you know, f say, you know, fantastic. You know, I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> I'm just really Thank excited. You. Oh, good. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, well, to the rest of the people out there listening, um, thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care and have a good one.